So before we get started with our biscuits, we need to uh, dissolve our yeast. Now, we're gonna dissolve our yeast in a half a cup of warm water and one teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna put it in this glass dish. I already have my sugar in there. I'm gonna put it in this glass dish, so a uh, glass so you can see it bubble. The sugar activates the yeast, but you have to use warm water and dissolve the sugar first, and then, okay, dissolve the sugar first, and then the yeast. So, just stir in the sugar till it gets dissolved. There we go. Almost done. Now, we're gonna take the yeast. This is four and a half teaspoons of yeast. You can use the little packets of the active, uh, the fast acting dry yeast. Uh, and dissolve it in there. It will take two packets for this recipe, but I have a big huge thing of, of yeast So I'm using four and a half Teaspoons and I'm just gonna pour it off in here And we're gonna stir it up and we're gonna dissolve it too And I don't know if you all like yeast rolls, but Love it. Love it. Love it. Now once we get to dissolving this, I'm going to set it to the side so you can see it. And it's going to start bubbling because the sugar is going to activate it. But it's going to take about five minutes for it to start bubbling, so we're going to do that first. So, you see my yeast? We're dissolving the yeast. You don't want it, you don't want it hot water, but you want it very, very warm water. So, we're dissolving that. And while we're doing that, while we're waiting on the yeast to dissolve and start getting active, um, I'm gonna put this right here so that you can see it. Okay? Now, we need for this recipe, I'm gonna put my gloves on, because we're gonna have to knead some dough. <laughs> you waiting by your mouth. <laughs> All right. Mr. Uh, um you wait by that 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 uh <laughs> keep waiting by that mailbox, okay? <laughs> All right. So for this recipe, we need five cups of flour. I already have my flour in here. And we need I forgot my pastry tool. We need a half a cup of sugar. Just drop that off in there. And we're gonna need a teaspoon of baking soda, cause we're gonna use our yeast to make our biscuits rise. So, I like to use that little lip right there and just kind of scrape it just like so. And there we go. We got a teaspoon of baking soda and need a teaspoon of salt. Yes, I'm eyeballing this salt. Okay. And we are going to need some very cold shortening. Now, fortunately for me, um, Crisco makes these in by the one cup. You can buy them singles or you can buy them um, three in a pack. I got these three in a pack because they didn't have any singles. But, and I got the butter Crisco, the butter tasting, because, you know, my butter tasting biscuits were last week. But this week, I still like butter tasting biscuits, so I got the butter tasting Crisco. So we're going to need a cup of Crisco. And if you look at it, let me wipe the fog off of here because I had it in the deep freeze. You can tell, hold on, there we go. You can see where it says, it tells you how much you need in teaspoons and cups 
or we're going to use the whole thing because this is one cup. Now, open this up. It wants to challenge me today. I'm not having it. So, oh, okay. Here we go. And we're just going to put that right there. Open that up right quick. Now, let me get my pastry tool so I can mix up my flour and, and salt. I'll be right with you. Whoa, look what happened. We're going to have to hurry up. Our yeast is starting to bubble up and rise, and I don't want it to overflow, so let me hurry up. to overflow all right now I'm gonna put this shortening in here and we're gonna pat have to pour some milk some of this up in here hold on I have an extra cup oh goodness I got a whole cup and it's still rising so, we're going to hurry up. There we go. Let's knead this into this. So I can get all covered. Because I hate big chunks of, of shortening all in one spot. Can't stand it. Just, ugh. I know I use that word a lot. I got that from the two-year-old I used to keep, I used to watch as a nanny. And his favorite saying was, ugh, when he didn't like something. So I kind of adopted it from him. So we're getting this all um, kneaded in, into this. If you don't have one of these tools, invest in one. They're like anywhere from 10 to $15. I got a, a large one. They come in smaller sizes. I got a large one because I have a large hand and those little bitty ones. I want to get the job done and get it done in a hurry. Come on, let's do this. That's the way I feel about it. Now, this is almost done. And I got yeast rising on this side and rising on that side. So when you're doing this, you might want to put it, that yeast in a larger uh, cup. I didn't realize it was going to rise so fast. And I forgot I got instant uh, yeast instead of just active dry yeast. And when it's instant, it means instant, lickety split. Okay. Now, use this little bar right here to clear all that out. I love this thing. I'm telling y'all, if you're a baker, you need one. Okay. Now, we're going to pour. Do this in three sections. I'm gonna pour some buttermilk. And we're gonna pour some yeast. All that foamy yeast. And we're gonna start mixing our dough together. And we're gonna hurry up because this one, look, it's already filled up again. So, just kind of start in the middle. You see my bowl? Just kind of start in the middle. Start mixing that up. Once that gets mixed in there kind of good, we're going to add some more. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that stuff is going. <laughs> and add some more buttermilk. Milk. 
Now, if you can, if you want to add it in smaller increments, you can. I just go three at a time. Hi, Janessa. Christine, when I tell you it's not hard to do to make buttermilk biscuits, and trust me, the first time I made them, they were all over the place. But I'm the type of person that I'm determined I'm going to get this. And so I get this. Now, I'm adding the last little bit of yeast. And last little bit of buttermilk. And it's that simple. It's that easy. So, we use five cups of flour. We use a half a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda and a cup of shortening. Reminds me of that song. Uh, my mama used to sing, my grandma used to sing when they were little, mama, little baby, love shortening, shortening. Some of y'all may be old enough to remember that song. Some of y'all may not be. We don't know. So, but we used a cup of shortening and we dissolved our yeast in a half a cup of sugar water. And when I say sugar water, you dissolve a teaspoon of sugar in a very warm cup, half a cup of water. Let me repeat that because uh, what I said was contradictory. You dissolve a teaspoon of sugar into a half a cup of water. Make sure it's fully dissolved. Make sure the water is very hot, but not too hot. It's hot to the touch, but not hot enough to burn you. And then after the sugar is dissolved, you're going to pour in four and a half teaspoons of your yeast. Now, if you don't have the big pack, like the big one pound bag, like I do, then you use two little small packets. And the two small packets of, you can buy the Fleischmann's. That's usually the ones that I see at the, at the grocery stores. It's called Fleischmann's. Uh, it's in a yellow and blue packs. It comes like three, three little segments. You're gonna use two of those in there. That equals two to two, two, four and a half cups. I mean, four and a half teaspoons, I'm sorry. Now, let y'all see what's going on in my bowl. See, my dough is made. Got some st sticking to the bottom, so we're gonna get all of this in here. Now, these biscuits can be frozen, so this makes a whole a, a lot of biscuits. Trust me, this makes a lot of biscuits. And oh, that yeast smells so good. Okay. Now we're going to roll it out. Now that we got it all together, I'm going to move everything out of the way. I have some wax paper here. You can use aluminum foil, you can use a cutting board, you can use whatever it is you want to use. I use wax paper because it is, um, it has a, a smooth non-stick surface. Now, even though it's supposed to be non-stick, trust me, it will stick to the wax paper. So, we want to make sure that we sprinkle some flour. Now, this flour is all-purpose flour. In case I didn't say that before. It's all-purpose flour. And I'm going to just spread it out right here. And I'm going to grab my dough, and it's 
it's a handful. All right. See my dough? I love working. It's, I'm a Play-Doh person. If you all were here a couple of weeks ago when I did the, the cloud dough, and you saw me playing with the dough, I like playing with dough. I especially like cooking when I'm making dough. It just relaxes me, which is probably why I like cooking so much. Now, I'm gonna get my rolling pin, put a little flour on it, sprinkle a little flour here. Let me scoop this back some so you can see what I'm doing. Now, we just gonna roll. Roll this way, roll that way. Now, you noticed last week that when I made the biscuits, I didn't roll it out. I just flattened it with my hands because I was making some flaky layered biscuits. Well, this week, this is totally different. So we're just gonna spread it out. I like to make my biscuits about, I guess about a half inch thick. And if, uh, if you want thicker biscuits, you don't have to roll them as flat as I roll mine. If you want thinner biscuits, you know, little kid size biscuits, you can roll it a little thinner. I think we got it pretty much even there. Now, tip of the day. When you cut these, start on the edge. And make sure you put that right there and kind of fold it on right there. And we're going to go around the edge. That's going to give you the most biscuits instead of you just chopping randomly. That's going to give you the most biscuits for your dough. So, we're gonna cut these. Make sure you have flour. I always keep extra flour on my cutting on my board, on my paper, so that I can dip it because it will get stuck to your, your little biscuit cutter. If you don't have a biscuit cutter, that's not a problem. How much buttermilk was it? It was two cups of buttermilk. I'm sorry. Two cups of buttermilk. Okay. So I start from the edge. And as you can see, I'm getting as close as possible to that other biscuit. We don't want any waste. A little fun fact about me. I used to be the biscuit maker at McDonald's when I was in college. That was my first job. Besides babysitting, that was my first job. My first job that uh, took me through college, helped me pay for tuition and books and whatever else I needed. Cause that scholarship I had didn't pay for everything. But yep, I was the biscuit cutter, the biscuit maker at uh, McDonald's on Main Street. It was the only one at that time in the city that I lived in. There are several there now, practically one on every corner. But yeah, I was the biscuit maker. So now, if you want to freeze these, you're gonna take these biscuits and you're gonna put some parchment paper on, or some wax paper. You can put it on a cookie sheet and just put them on the cookie sheet after you cut them, you put them on the cookie sheet and then stick them in the freezer. After they're frozen, you take a gallon size Ziploc bag. No ma'am, Natasha, I'm not wasting nothing. Not a thing, not a ting, not, as my grandma said, not a ting, not a ting. So, I, re I referenced my grandmother a lot because she was the one who I was in the kitchen with a lot when I was younger. And she was my first babysitter. 
So at three years old, I used to go lick the bowl. And when she made something, she said, okay, my cook, come on. And so I would go to the kitchen with her and I'd stand there on a little stool and wait on her to finish. And I would lick the bowl. And when my brother and sister were there. I'm like, uh-uh, y'all can't have the bowl. So I was the cook. And I love cooking to this day. She gave me my love for walking because I love walking trails. And she gave me my love for cooking. So, and we would do both. I have some very fond memories of her. Now, this is going to make more biscuits than me and my husband are going to eat. So, if you have friends or neighbors who like biscuits, take them, freeze them, and then find a cute little uh, gift bag, the little treat bags after they're frozen. But you have to deliver them right away. Put them in a little treat bag. Slap it in a gift bag. Take it over to them. Or if they're having dinner, tell them you're bringing the biscuits. Okay. See, this one will have to move out of the way because I got to get right here. Because again, Natasha, I'm not wasting a thing. Yes, Patsy, grandmothers are the best. And she left me with a lot of things I love to do. Now, she liked to quilt too, but I never learned how to sew. But give me some stitch witchery. Oh my gosh. I have made curtains. I have made a pool table uh, cover. I have made, uh, put hems and pants with some stitch witchery. Girls. Ooh now, I'm going to grab my... Um, I'm going to grab my cookie sheet and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about when I say to freeze them. Okay, so I have my cookie sheet. Oh, that's, hold on. Let me put some off. Uh, That's bright. And if I shine that in your face, y'all gonna be like, ooh, because I know I was just a minute ago. Okay. I have to get the most of my money. Turn it this way. So, this is the way, that, this is what I would do and what I am going to do to freeze these. I'll take them and put them on here. Just like so. And it doesn't matter if you stick, put them close together because you're freezing them. Now, when you bake them, here's another tip. When I bake them, when they, I take them out of the freezer and I sit them on the counter and Usually, either on the counter or on the stove, where my pilot light is. I don't know if you have electric or gas, but that pilot light gives just, just a little bit of heat. And if you have them stuck close together in a pan, they'll start to rise because you have the yeast in there. And then when you put them in the oven, they rise even more. And when I tell you, some good biscuits, some good biscuits. I know this because I tested the recipe last week when she challenged me. I had to make sure it was worthy of, of presenting it to you all. But they kind of taste like yeast rolls. If you like yeast rolls, they kind of taste like yeast rolls. They are yummy, yummy. So, now that I got these on here, I'm going to take my leftover 
And I'm going to put some more flour down here. Uh-oh, we're going to have to make room for this one. Come on, little bit. Got to get in here. Come on, little bit. There we go. And we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, about 23 rolls on here. I mean, I said rolls, biscuits. But we're not done. Because we need a little bit more flour. So I'm going to take my little scraps. And you know the deal. I'm going to roll it back out. And these are going to be the biscuits that we're going to have for dinner tonight. Those others are going in the freezer. So I can share with my friends, my neighbors. And you can freeze these for like 60 days. So up to about two months. As long as you have them in a Ziploc bag. When you take them out, after they're frozen, take them off, off of the tray. It only takes like two, three hours for them to freeze. Take them off the tray and make sure you put them in a Ziploc bag so they stay airtight. If you leave them in the freezer, it's going to taste kind of a, have a freezer taste to them when you cook them. I told you, Natasha, I'm not wasting nothing. You keep asking me what I'm going to waste. I'm not wasting nothing. Girl, watch, watch me rock and roll with this biscuit. Watch me rock and roll. It's just me and my husband here. We're empty nesters. We are empty nesters. That's why making all this food, I'm glad I have some nice neighbors that I can share with. And they share with me. I don't know if you all saw the video, but my there's a little girl, she's six years old, she lives next door to me, and she likes to cook too. Her and her mom made me some cinnamon rolls. And speaking of cinnamon rolls, if you flatten this out, about this thin, sprinkle some cinnamon over it, put you some pecans on there, put you a little brown sugar, and some, uh, if you like raisins in yours, put some raisins in and you roll it like you're rolling a, a, like a newspaper, like you're rolling a newspaper. And then it'll come up to about this big. Your roll will be about this big. You take your little, uh, your knife, make sure it's very sharp and cinnamon rolls. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot you can do with biscuits. Cinnamon rolls. If you want to really get creative, y'all like chicken and dumplings? Dumplings. You have this leftover and you're making some chicken and you squeeze a little bit like this. Make you a little ball like that. Drop it in that hot water. I'm just saying, there's so much you can do with biscuit mix. So, so much. Even if you want to make a Danish. You can roll it up. Before you roll it out, put some orange zest in there. Put some cranberries in there. Roll it out and make you some orange and uh, orange cranberry orange uh Biscuits, cinnamon raisin biscuits, whatever kind of biscuits you want. And see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And yes, Natasha is going round number three. Oh, I made this. Julia, you have to go back to the beginning. We made this from scratch. Flour, sugar, yeast, baking soda, salt, Crisco. Oh yeah. Ask Natasha. Tell Natasha. We made this. <laughs> <laughs> I 
We made this from scratch. I still got another couple of biscuits right here. There's one right there. Hold on. There's one right there. And Natasha, watch this. <laughs> Natasha's my friend today. Guess what? Biscuit number seven. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine biscuits. That'll be mine. And there we go. Now we're ready to bake them. You put them in the oven and you bake them for, <coughs> excuse me, on 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, again, everyone's oven is different. So keep an eye on them and watch them get nice, get nice and golden brown. And then when they come out, you can uh, do like I do. You can take that butter stick, that cold butter, and swirl it around on top of it. Give that nice shine. Or you can eat like, like it is. Now, I personally like eating my biscuits. If it's not dinner, if it's breakfast time, I like to get my disc jam good. And I'm going to be working on some new creations while I'm in uh, <laughs> what it feels like lockdown. I'm working on some new creations. So as soon as they release us, I'm coming out with some new jam flavors. I don't want to take a chance right now while everybody is uh, COVID-19 is going on. But after this is all over, said and done, we're going to look for some new jam flavors. But one of my favorites that I just made back in December is pineapple upside down cake. Yes, Patsy, I will get some new jam. Now, if you all have some jam flavors that you like, combinations that you like, hit me up in the comments. Yes, when it's all over, I'm going to make some more jam. But right now, I'm going to go bake these biscuits because lunchtime. So, thank you all for joining me today. And I'll be back uh, later this week. I had a request to make my sticky ginger garlic chicken. So that's going to be yum. Mm. And I'll show you what I'm going to pair it with. So come back probably, let's see, what's today? Monday? Probably on Wednesday. I'll come back and I'll make my sticky, uh, sticky garlic ginger chicken or ginger garlic, whichever one you call it. Both of them in there. The, two, the Both the G's are in there. Now, I hope you all enjoy. I will post the recipe in the comments so that, <coughs> excuse me, so that you'll know what to do and get you one of these. I can't tell you. And this little thing slides up and down and it cleans off your, uh, Cleans the dough off of there. It slides side to side. And cleans it like nobody's business. And look. Clean hands. <laughs> Natasha says she's going to put an alarm. <laughs> okay, Natasha. <laughs> I'll be back on Wednesday. Probably around the same time. Around noon on Wednesday. So that you all are have, uh, have time to run to the store and grab some chicken. Because it's, it's very easy, but it's, it's kind of a spicy because the ginger is hot. If any of you all know about ginger, I like to use instead of the sprinkled ginger, I got... Hold on, I'm going to show you what I got. I'll show you. I just went and got some this morning. I love, love, love. Y'all know what this is? That's ginger root. I bought it for the recipe. But you know also, ginger is good for your digestion. And every night when I go to work, I get my cup 
and I get some fresh pineapple and I dice it up some fresh pineapple and I get about I say about this much ginger from here up and I slice it up in my cup I heat some water in my tea kettle and I pour it over there and I let it sit for like two or three hours and then I add some honey <clears throat> which I use because every year my allergies cause me to I have environmental allergies and it makes me lose my voice <clears throat> excuse me so I have been fighting my allergies because I can't take Claritin or any of that other medicine but the public called me Sorry about that. Somebody tried to call me. Um, I take the pineapple. The pineapple has vitamin C in it, which we all need. And it's good for right now with this COVID virus because they, they're telling you to take extra vitamin C. And pineapple kills bacteria in your body. So it's good for that too. It's, good, it's a good cough medicine. And the honey, I take local raw honey because the local raw honey is uh, the bees have pollinated around here, so it helps to build my immune system. It helps to make me less allergic to whatever's in my environment. And with the uh, the ginger, the ginger has is like a detox. It helps with your stomach. It helps with gas, with reflux, all that good stuff. It works on your stomach. So if you ever have a stomach ache, get you some ginger. Even if you don't have the ginger root. If you get the ground ginger and make your ginger tea, it's good for your stomach. I promise you, because my husband has problems with his stomach all the time, so we get it. I'm, I'm making some for him. But if you really want to make it a detox and you really want that extra C, squeeze some lemon juice, some fresh lemon juice off in there. I'm telling you, the best allergy fighting for me and the cleansing of my body and my and, and my keeping my stomach well my gut health well and for cleaning out the bacteria so just saying pineapples ginger and uh if you want lemon and i put some uh honey in here i'm gonna let you see the bottom of my cup you see all my pineapples in there that's what I use. It's about between the pineapples and the ginger, it comes to about right here in my cup. So, yeah. I put that in there and I just drink it. Now, and I tell you what else, I'm allergic to pineapples. Raw pineapples, but when I pour that water on it and it heats it up and it cooks it and it, get, you, it draws that juice out of there, I'm set. So pretty soon, I'm not going to be allergic to pineapples either. Guarantee you that. But anyway, I'm going to go get my biscuits in the oven. And you all take those helpful, tip, tip, helpful tips and use them accordingly. Uh, if you are allergic to it, if you don't like it, this was just a helpful tip. If you if, if those ingredients don't mix, mesh well with you, please don't use them. Please use your better judgment. I'm just telling you what works for me, and it might work for you. I'm not a doctor. I'm just self-healing. Physician heal thyself. That's what the, that's what does it for me. So, you all have a good day. I'll be back Wednesday with the sticky ginger garlic chicken. Talk to you later. Thank you, Natasha.